Hi everyone, this is me, Jasneet Kaur. I hope you all are doing great. In my today's video, we will be talking about second unit, that is nutrition, food science, and technology. And we will be covering the second chapter of this unit, that is clinical nutrition and dietetics. My earlier video was all about uh, part one, and this video will be part two of second chapter. Before starting with the content, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel. Make sure you hit the bell icon to get notifications about my next uploads. Let's have a look of the topics which we have covered in part 1 that is nutrition and its meaning, benefits of nutrition, inadequate nutrition, clinical nutrition, new advancement in food and pharmaceutical industry, objectives of diet therapy, factors to be considered during therapeutic diet modification, role of clinical nutritionist and assessment of nutrition. If you are the one who have not seen part 1 till now, then for your reference, I will mention the link of part 1 of this chapter in the description box below. In the last video, we have covered that both normal and therapeutic diets are planned by dietitians to maintain or restore good nutrition in the individual. While doing this, they keep all the essential factors in their mind. Now, there are certain terms which they use while planning meal for any individual. Let's quickly have a look what these terms are all about. As you can see on your screens, these are types of diets, change in consistency, feeding routes, and prevention of chronic diseases. Let's understand one by one about each of these terms. Talking about the types of diets, the objective of all kinds of diets is to provide nutrition in adequate amount to everyone, regardless of their age, sex, physiological state and occupation. It can be provided in the form of regular diet or in the form of modified diet. The regular diet is the one which includes all the foods and meet all the nutritional requirements of any individual. Whereas modified diets are those diets in which the form of food is being changed either in the form of consistency, texture, increase or decrease of any nutrient or can be changed in number of meals. I would prefer to explain this with the help of example that rather than giving dal chawal to a pregnant woman, it is better to give vegetable idli with sambar. The next one is change in consistency. If I talk about someone who is ill or suffering from any disease, then in that case, it is advisable to give that person liquid, soft or regular diet, depending upon the condition of that individual. The first one is liquid diet. It is mainly at fluid consistency at room temperature. The advantage of this diet is that the nutrients are easily absorbed and digested if the gastrointestinal tract is functioning normally. Such diet is advised for persons who are unable to chew or swallow normally. For example, coconut water, fruit juice, soup, buttermilk, milk, etc. are the example of liquid diets. It is generally prescribed just after surgery. The only limitation or drawback of this kind of diet is that it is not uh, successful enough or sufficient enough to meet the nutritional requirement of the person completely. The next one is soft diet. The soft diet is little bit solid and have little bit amount of spices and condiments but it does not contain much of fibrous or gas forming foods. Such diets are easily chewable and easy to digest. Example of soft diets can be khichdi, uh, sabudana kheer, rice kheer etc. The last kind of diet in change of consistency is mechanical soft diet. Now this is a kind of diet which we even give uh, to normal adults in the older age group. 
the purpose of giving this kind of diet is uh, that people who have problem in chewing or in swallowing they can have this kind of diet to meet their nutritional requirement we include food items like soft diet or mashed uh, vegetables or fruits uh, even pureed food items it is different from soft diet as soft diet is a therapeutic modification in regular diet in soft diet the consistency and it includes you know simple easily digestible food items which has no high fiber high fat or spicy food items moving on to next term used by dietitians are feeding rules it can be further divided into three categories that is oral or through mouth tube feeding or intravenous feeding let's discuss all these three terms one by one first one is oral or mouth the best possible way for feeding the patient is oral or by mouth now there are certain conditions in which person is unable to chew or swallow example when the person is unconscious then in that case the person is fed through a tube other way around we can say the nutrition is delivered in the body of individual through tube feeding whereas intravenous feeding means that the patient is nourished with special solutions which are given through a drip in a vein The last term which we cover in this is prevention of chronic diseases. It focuses on healthy diet, good eating pattern, good nutrition as well as healthy lifestyle. According to this term, if we control our eating habits, if we modify our eating habits and we introduce the concept of physical activity in our day-to-day -day life, we can certainly delay the onset of chronic diseases. because nowadays the kind of food we consume that is highly processed food which includes much of additives and majority of time the food which we consume are high in fat sugar or in sodium content which is extremely unhealthy for our overall body growth if we do the analysis of urban indians over the past decade we will find that the consumption of fat refined sugar and animal protein has been increased drastically the consequences of these dietary changes would be chronic diseases such as obesity cancer of colon diabetes cardiovascular diseases and hypertension clinical nutritionists can play a very important role in preventing development of such problems by providing appropriate diet counseling and guidance they can also be appointed for guidance to various groups such as schools corporate sectors colleges etc now after this let's talk about the knowledge skills a professional clinical nutritionist must have the clinical nutritionist must be aware of the internal changes come across during illness apart from that changes in the daily nutritional requirement during illness type of modifications required in diet during illness knowledge of traditional and ethnic meals a skill of assessing nutritional status of any individual using clinical and biochemical criteria diet planning according to the need of individual and specific disease condition must be proficient in recommending right kind of diet to right kind of patients counseling adapting cultural environment of patients clearing food taboos and myths whenever necessary apart from all of these there are certain other qualities nutritionists must have these are they must be proficient with the theoretical and practical areas of the related fields of the subject basic knowledge of physical sciences which includes chemistry biology physiology and biochemistry as they are dealing with foods hence the awareness of microbiological process food quality and safety 
food laws are mandatory as they will be dealing with patients so skill of maintaining records bookkeeping account management especially personal management is necessary the other skills in order to become good dietitians must have is knowledge of sociology psychology and skills of counseling last but not the least courage of being experimental with patients in order to identify the usefulness of various diets medicines and nutritional supplements now after this let's understand what you need to pursue or what qualification is required to become clinical nutritionist initially you need to clear your 12th class and after that you need to enroll yourself in bsc degree in home science or bsc in nutrition afterwards you need to go for pg diploma in dietetics with relevant internship at some hospital or at some recognized clinic the second option you can go for is after clearing your 12th class exam you can go for bsc in home science or in life science biochemistry microbiology or in biotechnology and afterwards you need to pursue your pg diploma or msc in food science and nutrition or dietetics these two options are available to become a clinical nutritionist apart from the, these there are certain open universities which provide diploma courses or certificate courses in this field talking about the scope or after pursuing higher education in this field you can work with health clubs gyms in hospitals uh, you can work as a freelancing dietitian as well apart from that you can uh, provide catering services for hospitals schools industrial canteens you can even become entrepreneur who develop and supply specialty food for specific health purposes the other option you have in other department or in other field is teaching academics you can certainly go for research you can write your papers and you can do more research in clinical nutrition field apart from that you can go for nutritional marketing and technical writing as well so in today's video we have covered topics uh, basic terms which dietitians use preparing for a career qualification required and scope I hope students the content of both the parts is clear to each one of you and if you come across any doubt you can certainly get back to me meanwhile stay tuned i will see you soon with my next video till then take care bye bye